Hi everyone, welcome back to Walt and Sarah's channel. Today we are going to be making custom gift bags just in time for Mother's Day. This set is available through Amazon. You get a whole bunch of bags for a little bit of money and I love them. I'll definitely leave a link in the description. So I'm going to choose gold for this particular bag. This is going to be for my mom, my kid's mom, -mom. So we're going to put mom, mom on it and we're going to have some cool daisies on the top. To find your center point, what you should do is open up the bag. I wasn't taking into consideration that once the bag is open, that little bottom portion there goes away. One thing I will note is I am not using any stabilizer. I feel like you don't need them for these bags in particular. Most bags, yes, of course, I'm going to use some type of tear away. These ones, they're eh, not the most expensive bags. They hold up really well. They're very thick. They're like that woven material. I think it's fine without stabilizer. If you want to use it, I'm not going to judge you. It's none of my business. But I personally don't feel the need, and I'm going to save the money by not putting it on there. We are, however, going to use the water stabilizer at the end. Once we actually get to the embroidering process, we're going to put that washable water stabilizer on top. And that's going to help our stitches kind of pop out a little. For most of my projects, I prefer to use my Durky hoops. I love them so much. But for this one, I'm going to use the Magnetic Fast Frame. The only downside to using this frame is the amount of hoop burn we're going to end up with at the end. But I will say, after doing these so many times for like birthday gifts and parties and whatnot, the hoop burn does go away. So it's going to freak you out when you first take your hoop off and you see how bad it indented. But it does go away, I promise. The hoop size is 8 by 9 and my design is only 6 inches wide. So I don't have to make sure it's super, super centered because I can line it up through the machine. Rather than keep taking the magnetic hoop off and redoing it, redoing it, redoing it, I just kind of got it as close as I could and then I used the machine to actually center. As always, it is critical that you trace your design. These are not the hoops that come with the machine. They are like an aftermarket, third party type thing. So it is so important that you trace your design, whether it's just a name or you're adding an actual image to it, you need to trace it. Now I am measuring out the amount of water stabilizer that I'm gonna put on top. This is going to go directly on top of the bag and then my stitches are going to go on top of this. And then once I'm all finished, I will go and wash it off. And it's going to almost give my stitches like that 3D look. It's going to have a little bit of a puff to it. Not crazy. We're not using 3D puff. This is just water stabilizer. Most of the time when you buy water stabilizer, especially if you get it from a local store, it is clear. I got this online somewhere. I've had it for a while. I really do like this stuff. It's white rather than the clear. It's the same thing. It works the same. It's fine. If you have the clear or if you have the white, it doesn't matter. So this is just some satisfying stitches in hyperlapse timing. Oh, I love watching embroidery go it was super, super fast. I wish it was this fast in real life. As you can see, I did not cut enough of the top layer there. So I did have to trim off a little bit more and stick it on there. I think it's because I put it on there kind of crooked. You can see at the bottom of the right M. Not a big deal. It's going to look okay. And there you can also very, very clearly see that hoop burn that I warned you guys about in the beginning of the video. It definitely is there, but it will go away and it will look like a normal bag that is custom and embroidered as soon as we get all this stuff washed off and dried. This step is optional. I personally like to add the button because this helps people use the bag more often once the party's over, once they open up their gift. If it's just an open bag, I mean, yes, they can use it, but I do feel like people prefer some kind of way to seal their bag closed whether it's a zipper or a button, but because these bags are a little bit on the cheaper end as far as material goes, I prefer putting the snap button on there. It's a quick process. You just poke through and then you clip it, boom, done. And now where you want your button to go is another thing that is your preference. Typically I go a little bit higher. This time I wanted to try it below that line. You can see about an inch of the stitch that was already on the bag and typically I will go above it, but this time I wanted to try to go a little bit lower just to see how it would look and its function. Personally, it's a little bit easier if you do it higher up, so moving forward, I'll probably keep it moving up. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you two other bags that I worked on at the same time. 
And I will show you where I put the button on that one. I promise. I tried so hard to get the process of the button into the frame of the camera and I just failed miserably. I am seven months pregnant at this point and my belly kept smacking the tripod. It was so embarrassing. So I had to edit all the shaking out and I'm trying to do this on an angle. So guys, I really tried to get it so where you could see what I was doing perfectly, but it was an epic fail. But you get an idea and there are videos out there that show you how to apply these snap buttons. Um, that's how I learned was to watching other people make YouTube videos of how to do it. So they are great. It's an awesome tool to have, especially if you're into sewing, embroidery, whatever. Having the option to add these little buttons is awesome. It does require a little bit of muscle to press down, but once you get it on there, they're on there pretty good. And when you pull them apart, they almost feel like they're going to come apart, but they don't. I honestly have never had one come apart. Let me knock on wood real quick. Knock, knock. I've been very lucky that I been able to attach them pretty good so hopefully they don't come off because I haven't experienced that yet but now that we're done with our buttons and our embroidery it's time to wash off our water stabilizer freaking easy process guys as soon as the stickiness goes away you know you're good so this was a couple hours later after the bags kind of dried I mean there's still a little bit damp but it's okay I just want to finish up this video so I can show you guys what these look like this is the one we worked on together my only regret is not using a darker green but that's what me and then this one is what I was showing you guys with the button and how it went up higher I kind of like it up there towards the top and this is also showing you that once that bag is open you lose about an inch at the bottom so when you're centering you kind of want to move that up a little bit further my opinion this pink one turned out the best it is a rose gold which is like my favorite so yes guys quick and easy gift bags that you can make usually i'll just put somebody's name across the center if it's like for a birthday gift but now it's for mother's day each you know my mom my grandma and my sister are gonna have a bag for their stuff and i'm so excited so thank you guys so much for watching i hope to catch you all in the next one i post embroidery videos quite often so don't be afraid to subscribe like and i'll see you next time bye everyone